there are a certain set of pillars of just blueprints within rap music that a lot of successful artists have come by way of. If you ask somebody what made 50 Cent relevant, then it would be pretty obvious that he laid on the violence pillar. If you ask somebody what made Jay-Z come to prominence, it would be drugs. If you ask about Rick Ross, it would be materialism. And one common theme that's obviously been going on this whole time, whether you want to argue about good music, bad music, real hip-hop, not real hip-hop, mumble music, whatever the fuck, it's misogyny. And Eminem has easily come into the game by way of that. There's obviously skill that goes into uh, all of these situations because you wouldn't be uh, you wouldn't be a successful artist if you weren't skilled. That goes without saying. But there was one thing that Eminem did that made him popular within rap music. And if for years and years and years it was all about degrading women and was all about objectifying women in rap videos. And, and, by, and by the way, folks, th these, these things that I'm saying right now, it's not really to be judged. We love our ignorant shit, and I am not a, an exception to that. I love my fucking ignorant music, whether it's misogynistic, whether it's violent, whether it's materialistic. That's not the point. These are just facts that are being stated. Now, as women were being objectified and still are being objectified to this day, maybe not as much because we pretty much have our biggest female artist to date right now. You had Eminem come in and say, well, look, I'm not going to do this the most conventional way. I'm not going to say that I hate women in my videos or make music about just random women that I hate. I'm going to tell you guys something. I hate my mother and I hate my baby mother. How's that for a different perspective? How, how's that coming at this from another total angle? And we loved it. And we related to it because even though he's a white guy from a trailer park in Detroit, there's still that one relatable attachment that we can connect to the rest of the music that we knew and loved. Again, I know a lot of you guys are gonna be listening to this and say that's horrible, but when you listen to your music, you have to come to terms that this is a fact. It's a fact. So when Eminem makes this song, uh, apparently it's triggered the, uh, against Donald Trump. I mean, I would argue that it's not really much of a Trump diss. It's sort of more of a, sort of an opportunistic approach and attaching Trump's name to a few of the bars and you know maybe dancing around the issue and implying certain things but I wouldn't really call it a Trump diss I want to also address uh, a comment that was made by a youtuber by the name of Dom is live so Dom uh, uh, you know obviously he he talks about rap music quite a bit and uh, he made comments about this song and he said that Eminem is the only white artists that can go against Donald Trump and still be loved by white people. And sort of later on, he implies that uh, there would, you know, he doesn't think Eminem is going to get backlash for this because he's Eminem. Uh, a, a lot of Trump supporters were fans of Eminem or still are fans of Eminem. This is totally untrue. This notion that there is any backlash coming to any artist because they go at Trump is fucking ridiculous and it's laughable. OK, as I said a few months ago, I said that Trump equals good music. Why? Because it's easy. And this song is basically an example of that. I mean, you had Eminem go off for about seven minutes. He mentions Trump here and there for a few bars. And then it's like considered to be like a shot or a statement or some, you know, big political stance. And it's really not. The reason why there will be no backlash is because going at Trump has become status quo, sir. That... That's it. This is the norm. Dissing Trump is it's congratulated. It's it, you're, you're revered all of a sudden for going up against Trump and you really don't have to have much of a political stance or or a lot of knowledge about politics to go at him. And that's the beauty of it. And that's why I said that Trump plus hip hop equals good music. Be somebody like Killer Mike. Be somebody like Kendrick. Be an African-American artist 
and make a fuck Hillary song when she is running against a candidate like Donald Trump. Make no mistake about it. This election is so polarizing that it's really about who you don't like. It's not about who you like. How many times have you had conversations with people over the past month, over the past two months, and you tell them what you think about the election? And what you most likely did was you talked about who you didn't like. So people normally paint you into a corner. And if you say you don't like Trump, people say, well, well, okay, so you're voting for Hillary. And if you say, well, fuck Hillary, people say, well, okay, you're voting for Trump. You see, there's no middle ground here. That's how terrible our choices are. There is no middle ground. So be somebody like Killer Mike. Be somebody like Lupe, for example, who, you know, several years ago, if you guys remember, basically said that Obama is a terrorist. Now, he didn't mean that in the literal sense, but the media sure as hell took it as that. And that was backlash. I mean, Lupe's obvious, uh, you know, he obviously has a history of, you know, being a bit of, of an outsider. So maybe it would be easier for him to make records like that. But be somebody like Kendrick and bring up Hillary's emails, bring up pay for play, Br uh, bring up Bill Clinton's sexual assaults that Hillary has tried to cover up and even attempted to bully victims into silence. That's backlash. Dissing Trump, whether you're Eminem, whether you're Andre 3000, whether you're Macklemore, whether you're Bubba fucking Sparks, which Eminem mentioned in the song, it doesn't matter. It doesn't make a difference. It has become the norm, and it is the status quo. So I completely disagree with Dom is live, because that was just a uh, just totally a ridiculous statement. Now, one line that I did like from the from the record was uh, when he said, "Well, you know, basically, you uh, think that Trump is a good candidate because he funds his own uh, campaign. Good idea. Once I get in office, get in office. The first order of business." Once I get in office, just love that colorful wordplay from M, you know, and, and, and it's always with a hint of humor. You know, there was a lot of humor on this record, you know, obviously with the rubber band line, with, with the laughing stock. And that's why you can't take it too seriously. You know, I bring up the misogyny because obviously that's what Donald Trump is being represented as. He's being represented as. Uh, first and foremost, at this moment, as a misogynist, before he was being represented as a racist, uh, a xenophobe, um, and a fucking idiot, just totally. That's He's always going to carry that out. But right now, what's at the forefront is his misogyny. And, you know, he is, he is a mis misogynistic asshole. But it's very funny that now Eminem is going up against him when Eminem was one of our most beloved misogynists. That is how he came to prominence within rap music. Again, skill is always a part of it. Of course, Eminem is skilled beyond anything that you could possibly imagine. That goes without saying. Little Uzi Vert is skilled. That's right, I said it. I said Little Uzi Vert is skilled. You may not like uh, you know, the manner in which he goes about it, but he is skilled, and that goes without saying. You can't take this record too seriously. Because towards the tail end of it, he basically goes at Molly Curum. Okay, for those of you guys, for the, for those of you that don't know who Molly Curum is, there is a popular sports show on ESPN called First Take, and it's hosted by Stephen A. Smith, Max Kellerman, and the moderator is Molly Curum. She's a very attractive woman, and Eminem just in the tail end of this track just talks about her and you know you know you can make the shady brand or whatever the fuck he says that's why you can't take this record too seriously so i don't want people making this out to be a big political statement because it's really not and eminem doesn't take it that seriously because he has pockets within this record where he's just being humorous and at the end of the record he says why am i such a dick so don't take it too seriously I see it as more of an opportunistic approach and just an attempt to throw his hat out there and say, hey, I'm here. Remember me? I'm the guy who made songs against George W. Bush. I'm that beloved misogynist who played around with that on the song, too. I'm a misogynist, bitch, get to massage in this dick. I've listened to this record quite a few times, and, and you really have to. You can't 
uh, you you can't really digest it if you listen to it once or twice um, because Eminem takes such a complex approach to it. But what did you guys think about the record? I mean, did, were, were there some lines that I missed that were really directed towards Trump? I felt that anything that wasn't directed towards Trump at the beginning was sort of setting a what painting a picture of what the world would be like if Trump was president. I, or, or maybe that I'm just over uh, sh shooting that one, you know, and may maybe it was just random bars that could possibly be the case, too. But what did you guys think about the record? Uh, do you think I'm right or wrong about Dom is Live's approach or the misogyny thing? Please let me know how you feel in the comment section, and I will see you guys next time.